guys, Blacklight here, and today we have another Pixcraft episode. I have some unfortunate news and some good news at the same time. Um, my headset, my new headset did arrive yesterday, uh, but I cannot get the mic to work properly. My computer will not detect it, and uh, so I'm still trying to figure that out. I've searched everything I can think of, and I've looked through a ton of results on Google and on the uh, Turtle Beach like uh, help section and I contacted them, but no luck so far, so still working on that. Uh, hopefully we'll get that sorted out soon. So for now I'm still using my old mic and I still cannot hear the game, so that's fun. <laughs> um, but right now we are doing uh, a project. I've cleared out some space here, although it's not really enough space. I'm gonna need to clear out some more. And I've got the supplies that I'm gonna need for it. And all this right here uh, collectively took about 18 stacks of redstone. Doesn't look like there's much here, but all the repeaters and torches and the lamps even uh, took quite a bit so uh, yeah I'm just gonna probably clear out a little bit more space here because I don't think you guys are want to watch that and then I'll explain what we're doing okay I've cleared out some more space and before we continue I wanted to mention uh, one or two things first of all if you guys remember I was using an efficiency one unbreaking one diamond pick that I had enchanted a while ago at a low level uh, before we had the mob farm and that's 100% gone and then you remember I got that efficiency four and that's almost gone uh, so I've done a lot of digging although most of this I'd say half of this efficiency four has gone to clearing out this maybe a little bit less than half and uh, other assorted projects and stuff just cleaning up areas uh, but half of it also went to mining and let me show you uh, how much I've gotten. I haven't showed this in a while, or at all, I don't think. Look at that, almost a stack of diamonds, almost a stack of iron blocks. Uh, so we're doing well here. I actually just picked up some more iron when I was digging out that area. And um, I'm just gonna say it right now, what I'm building here is uh, making uh, the potion customizer, and I've actually made some changes. So I'm gonna flip on over to single player real quick, and I'm gonna show you a uh, prototype I made for what I'm building right now. Okay, so here is the prototype. Uh, if you guys remember, the potion customizer wall used to look like this. There didn't used to be that area over there, so it just used to look like this. Uh, but I've added this area over here, which basically, uh, you guys you guys know how this works. And I'm not going to select any ingredients, but they would fall as well. Uh, I'm going to press enter. And also notice that the bottles fall a lot faster than in the old model, if you guys remember it. Uh, if you don't know about that, then you're just going to have to take my word for it, that the bottles are falling a lot faster than they used to. Uh, if we press, uh, let's just go right to the 9 basically, but all these do exactly what they sound like they do. They make it dispense uh, that many times, so I'm going to get 9 nether warts and 9 times 3, can't do math right now, 27 bottles from pressing that. And this would work also if I was using ingredients, but uh, I'm too lazy to fill those later, so yeah, that's how that works. So this is what we're building, This is <laughs> this is what we have to do. Uh, so this may be a more than an episode project, but let's get started right now. And one other thing I should mention before we begin, uh, first of all, I made a ton of stone. I had even more, but I had to use like three stacks or so making, um, my, like more like five stacks making those repeaters, so that took up quite a bit. Uh, but I made a ton of stone, which we're probably going to turn mostly into stone brick, but I like to have some around just for that exact purpose if we need repeaters. And another thing, I did not show me on camera yet getting this pick right here. Yeah, you're seeing that pick. That is a really good pick. Um, so I actually did record me getting that, but I didn't have my headset plugged in, so it's not going to have any audio, but I'll show that right now. Okay, so after I showed that enchantment, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was sick. I can't believe I got that. That efficiency 5 is ridiculously hard to get. Uh, so I've laid out the wall here. I think this is a design I'm going to use. I'll probably end up changing it up in the future. It probably will look different in the end. Um, but this is what I'm going to stick with for now. We'll see how it looks once this room is actually finished up. Now we have to place all of our levers here. Oop, not right place. <laughs> oh, look at that. Like all of them up at once. It's pretty sick. Alright, skip that one. And button here. So this is what our wall is going to look like. And uh, I also need a bunch of signs to label those. So what I did also off camera is I collected a bunch of logs. I got about five stacks off camera. So that should be plenty to make all the signs we need. 
And now I'm going to go back here and clear out more room for all the wiring we need to do, because we need to do a lot of wiring. <laughs> so let's do this. Alright, so my efficiency 4 pick just broke, sadly. Um, but, yeah, time to break out this bad boy. Let's see how this does. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is like a, almost, basically a single tap on stone. It's kind of like an extended tap. Like, you can barely see the thing. This is ridiculous, and this pick should last me a really long time, too, because it is unbreaking. Uh, so I'm just going to continue clearing out the space back here. Alright, so uh, here I've completed the first half of the AND gates, and basically what this does is if I come back around here and I flip one of these levers, let's just pick that one, you can see that the output will change here. And the reason we need all this fancy stuff uh, is because we also need to have another input towards that, which is going to end up being from this button, but because of all these levers that I added that makes it so you can have more than one set of items fall down, uh, it's going to be more of a process before the signal actually gets to these. But that the button is what's going to finally actually power the other half of the end gates. Uh, so now we actually need to build the other half of the end gates. Alright, so I've gone ahead and wired up the other side of these end gates. And actually, let me make a way down here. Oops, just took out a torch. <laughs> and I ran into the cave that was back here. Let me just seal this up. Um... What can I do here? Sure, why not? Anyway, so basically, if these if uh, these blocks get powered, what's on the other side of these blocks is just a long line of torches. And so while those torches are on, it is either keeping this line on, which is keeping this torch off, or is directly keeping this torch off. Um, so basically, as if we... Oop, my phone just went off there. Sorry about that. Um, okay. <laughs> That was just Smahoog there texting me. Anyway, um, if I turn on one of these levers now, you'll see that nothing will happen over here. And the lever I turned on, you can see by that glowing lantern. Nothing happens until we power this line, then it can turn on. Because then the, these torches are all turned off. And basically that's the main principle behind this part of the machine. Now we just have to wire these up to the correct dispensers. Uh, so that's all the kind of complicated redstone, although it's not really that complicated out of the way. And now I need to clear out even more space for where the dispensers are, so I'll be right back again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've been clearing space for about 45 minutes, maybe, maybe maybe less. It felt like 45 minutes. God, it's so boring. Just clearing out space. Look at my pick. Look at my beautiful pick. It's already like a fourth gone just from clearing this out. That's how much space this really is. I mean, it doesn't look that big, but it's so tall, really, that it just takes up so much time. And I left the coal in the walls so I can come back and get it with my fortune pick. Um, so, yeah, I can start laying down the redstone at this point. So I'm just going to bring the signals up here and maybe start connecting them, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've wired up all of the uh, simple ones. <laughs> simple with air quotes around it. Um, what I need to do now is hook up the two potions, which are damage, I think I put damage there, and, uh, I'll have to check my single player world in a little bit, and, uh, speed, or slowness here, they actually require two ingredients, so all these only require one, um, for damage you need, uh, spider eye, which is gonna go here, and, uh, fermented spider eye, which is here, and for slowness you need fermented spider eye, which is here, and sugar here. Um, so I'm gonna just do that real quick. I show—I forget I'd show this first because it's gonna look a lot more complicated once I add that in. Uh, so you can see it's actually fairly simple just connecting all these up. Um, and I did use most of the space. I didn't use all the space back here, um, but I didn't really know how much I'd need and it makes it feel less crowded, so whatever. Uh, so I'll be right back once again. Okay, so I very quickly hooked up, uh, I made this actually simpler than my single player world, uh, the damage potion. Basically here's the input for it and I have all the levers flipped, uh, I should probably mention that. I have all the levers flipped down here, you can see, so that I can tell if the signal reaches or not. Uh, let me just, oop, fell down a hole. Let me just head back up. I've got a little staircase over here. And how the heck, <laughs> moving, maneuvering around here is extremely difficult. Um, okay, so basically, here's the line. I have a lot of diamond. <laughs> anyway, um, here's the line for the damage is right here. And they, uh, right... Oh, did I hook these up? Yeah, I hooked these up to the right thing. This is the line for Fermented Spider Eye, and this is the line for Spider Eye. Uh, you can see that I just have a repeater going into both of those so that the tr uh, signal cannot travel back into this line, but it can travel outward. 
Uh, so now I'm just going to hook up slowness. Alright, I just hooked up the, uh, sh what am I saying? Slowness. <laughs> there we go. And this was also very simple, two redstone and one repeater. Uh, this injects a current into this block. And by the way, oh yeah, um, the multiverse mod kind of messed up uh, the nether in the other world, so uh, Joe there is in the free play world. And um, so I'm letting them spawn nether items for now till I can get that fixed. So that's he's not actually in this world right now, don't worry. Um, it, the current goes into this block, which powers that redstone and that redstone. So that's how that works. And uh, just to show that this does work, what we're going to do right here, since I do, I check my time and I'm still under 10 minutes, so I've got plenty of time. Um, so this is going to be slowness. Let's do that first. Let's turn off damage. Let's turn off, uh, where is it? Which one am I thinking of? Hmm, weakness is there, I think. And speed is there. So the uh, sugar line, which would be powered only by the, the, uh, the speed line would power only the sugar. And the fermented spider eye, which only the weakness line would power, should still both be on, even though their inputs are not on. So we have this line powering here and here, even though both of those are actually off. We can see here, that's off. And, uh, oh, I'm stuck over here. <laughs> this is kind of hard to look at. You're just going to have to mostly take my word for it. Um, that's, and that's off, and way over there. You can barely, no, you can't see. Uh, come on, jump, jump. All right, let's just pillar up. Wait, I can get up over here. Yes, that's off. Okay. So, yeah, both of those lines are off, but they're still getting powered by this. And now let's do the other one. Let's do damage. So let's turn this off. Damage on. Um, slowness can be back on again, we don't care about that. Or, er, speed, sorry. And then we also have to turn off poison, which is just spider eye. And let's head back up again. So this is just proof of concept right here. Basically. Just, and this is also for my testing purposes. Uh, you can see damage line is on, powering both of these, even though... That's off and that's off. Both of those lines... Ooh, I'm stuck back here again are still on. So yep, that all works. And now I just have to uh, start clearing out room for the number selector, like how many times it's going to send out an output. So I'm just going to clear out some more space and I'll be right back. And with that, I am essentially done with clearing. And I'm actually surprised that my pick didn't actually get too used. Uh, but before we start the time circuit kind of thing over here, uh, we have one more task to attend to, and that's actually setting up the button over here. Uh, it has to go to a few places, so I'm gonna do that once again off-camera and show you when I'm done. I'm doing it that way because, basically, I'm switching back and forth between single-player and multiplayer every couple seconds because um, the timings are very exact, block placement is very, very exact. Uh, if I place one block in the wrong place, it could cut off a line, especially when I show you this area when it's done. Uh, you you'll see how hectic it is. Um, so I'm just gonna complete the button setup, and I'll be right back. Alright, so I've brought the current from... Let me just show you this, actually. Uh, how do I get down? How do I get down? <laughs> oh, so much stuff here. Um, let me actually delete that. I've got the current going up by this torch tower, and I have to head back up again. <laughs> Jeez, I need to make better ways around this area, but I probably won't be coming back here too much, except to refill my uh, dispensers once I'm done with all this. So the current comes up here. Uh, travels up this line, and this is going to be our nether wart. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so whenever the button's pressed, this line will be activated, and no matter what, we'll get nether wart. And then obviously the uh, the number selector will select how many times we get nether wart and everything else, basically. Uh, now we also have to do the bottles, and I came up with a new design for my triple pulser that first of all makes you get the items a lot faster, and um, is a lot cheaper to build also. So First, we need to do this, and basically what I'm doing, <coughs> excuse me, once again, geez, uh, right here is, uh, this is going to be kind of difficult without being able to fly, I'm building a monostable circuit so that the pulse is shorter, uh, so that I need less repeaters to actually create the three pulses. So that's basically what I'm doing to make this cheaper. So we're just building a simple, that is not redstone, that is a torch, building a simple monostable circuit here. And I figured I'd show this because this is not exactly basic stuff. Uh, okay, now we need to clear a little bit more space. I'll do that and I'll be right back. 
All right, so I have finished the triple pulsar. I just did it real quick. It's not really that complicated. Uh, these are the delays that you'll need if you're trying to build it off of this, although it's kind of hard since I'm chopping this up. I do actually plan on making a tutorial on this machine, uh, so look forward to that soon. Um, but, yeah, here's the delay setup. These are both on one tick. This is four, three, and two. And then you just have this line, and this is the line that actually gets powered. And let me show you this actually real quickly. It doesn't even look like it gets unpowered, but it is, trust me. I've tested it multiple times. Uh, so if we look at that line there, you can see it doesn't even look like it gets unpowered, uh, but it's getting unpowered very, very quickly each uh, each time that the, the repeater that's powering the line switches. Uh, so that's how that works, and then I just have it hooked up to the dispenser up here. Alright, so now we've got all of our dispensers hooked up. All we have left to do is do all the timings here. So I'm going to set that up, uh, and I'll do my best to explain it, but it is rather complicated, so I'll be right back. And with that, I do believe that I am done. Um, so let me just quickly run over the machine here real quick. Um, I'm just going to briefly explain this. That's the button, and all you need to know about what this line, this uh, one wide column is right here and up here, is that basically this torch is the output for that button, and what it does is just emit, I think it's a three tick output, might be two ticks, but a button I think is ten ticks, I believe, and um, ten or eight or something like that. And I need it to be about two or three. I think it's either two or three. I don't really care. All I know is it works. So, <laughs> whatever. I'll test that some other time. Uh, but so this is the final output for the button. And what happened? And also another thing you need to know: this right e repeater right here is the input for the machine. Uh, so we need to get from from here to here. So this is the input. This is the output. Uh, what happens here is this torch will get powered for two or three ticks or whatever and first it'll come down here and it'll stop you can see here it goes down this line and just stops and it'll also go down this line uh, it'll power this block which will power this line which will send one input to the machine and then it'll come down here and it'll stop now if we have the lever clicked for three um, what you'll see that a block popped up over here, and what that'll do is all of this stays the same. Everything stays the same. Goes through that that uh, goes into the output once, comes down here, goes to this block to this repeater, output twice, continues down the line, goes into this repeater, output three times, comes around and stops right here. Now, if we activate six times, we can turn off three here. You'll see that piston stays up. Basically, uh, this repeater, this line's getting powered by the six times. Uh, lever. Um, this repeater just sends power to that piston that 3 also powers. Um, the signal will come down here just as usual, go through all three of those, and it'll come around here, but just as it gets to here, this piston will be powered by this line. You can see that the signal also travels down here from the torch, goes into this block, goes down here and stops, but it goes down this line, and just as the signal comes around here, this block will pop up, and send the pulse around another time. So that's a total of six. And if we do nine, you can see that all three pistons are up, that one, that one, and that one over there. Uh, it'll go around the two times that it went around before this loop. Uh, but since that piston's up, you can see this huge delay. It'll pop up just as it comes around for the third time, sending around a third time and therefore emitting nine outputs. Uh, so I'm going to fill just the nether wart in the bottle so we can test this out, and I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm back again, and um, I should mention that I AFK'd in the nether wart farm for a while while I had lunch, so I have some more nether wart now, and I went, I went and made some more glass bottles. I collected some sand and made some glass. And uh, also, I had tested this, and it wasn't working. I was only getting two glass bottles, and I was sitting here for the longest time uh, trying to figure out why, and I was checking all my delays everywhere, and it turned out uh, that has to be set on four, not three. I had it like this, I had it like this, and it has to be like that. Uh, so make sure to do that if you're copying this. I apologize for not getting that right the first time. Um, so, yeah. That's, and all these are the same. I was adjusting all these a ton of times. I didn't know it was wrong. Uh, so I figured it out, and that's what that was the problem was. Uh, I made this handy ladder here. So let's just test this out real quick. If we press this button, we should get three glass bottles and one nether wart. And we do. And let's store that in the chest so it's easier to see what we have in our inventory. And if we click the three lever, we should get nine glass bottles and three nether wart. There we go. Works perfectly. And I haven't actually tested this yet, so I'm doing this live right here. Well, yeah. 
kind of live, you're not seeing it live, but I'm doing this without testing it beforehand. Uh, we should get 6 nether wart and 18 glass bottles. And we do. And now for the real test here. <laughs> uh, oh god, um... 9 nether wart, 27 glass bottles. Looking good, looking good so far. Yes, it works! All of it works! Uh, so now I think I'll fill up some sugar and other things and see if the other stuff worked. I'll do some testing. Maybe I'll even make my first potion from this machine. Uh, so I'll see you in a sec. Alright, I'm pretty much done here. If I turn around, you can see um, I got the interface all working. Except for this, I've got a hole open. Let's just quickly run through the wiring. I've got everything labeled, by the way, here with what it does. Uh, timing mechanism for the multiple pulse emitters. Um, all the AND gates, the enter button, mess, everything, all this mess over here. Uh, the AND gates, lower part of the AND gates over here. Head on up. And all of the uh, connectors to the dispensers. Nether wart line over here, coming from this torch triple pulse emitter with the kind of minor stable circuit right there. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much this. Quick way down right there. <laughs> Alright, and one more thing before I go. I wanted to show you guys uh, my reloading mechanism I came up with here. So if we head on up, uh, we step in this area right here and we click this lever. You can see this all opens up and from this position we can reach all the dispensers to fill everything up. And I've got everything labeled as well. Although, it's a little hard to read for me, but I know where things are, so... Uh, yep. That's that. Got that all working. What I plan to do is actually have a path coming up around here so that this can be flush with the wall, so the walkway is going to be moved from this area. Uh, so yeah, and next episode we'll probably work on aesthetics for this room. Uh, before I go, let's just give it a quick test. Uh, I guess I'll take... I already set this up beforehand, but three... We want th uh, three batches of extended speed potions. You can see speed right there. I was pointing at the poison. I don't know why. What's wrong with me? Okay. Press the button. And wait for our items. And you can see, we got the proper amount of everything, and we could go ahead and make our potions. Uh, so next time, we'll set up an easier brewing station. I'll probably go into the nether and collect some more blaze rods off camera. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I normally don't ask for this, but uh, I timed it. Well, not really timed, but um, I just, look from looking at the time on my clock on my computer, I spent about five or six hours working on this, so if you guys enjoyed it, please do leave a like, I would appreciate it. I spent a long time, and it was pretty hard work getting all this done. Uh, so thanks for watching, hope to see you guys next time, and bye, thanks for watching.